doing some shooting. Um, if you guys haven't seen this rifle before, this is an MVP Patrol. It's a 308 slash 762 by 51 rifle. I know the lighting is horrible. Uh, it's just kind of awkward lighting today. Um, it's a real cool rifle. It's a it's a Vortex Crossfire 2, uh, one to four times magnification uh, scope on there. It's a uh, it's got no. Um, it's a really nice scope. Like you can do all the adjustments without like a tool or anything. It's just like you just actually click it. You can use a tool too, and you can reset it to zero too. Um, if you've gone too far off and you just want to start over. Um, this is a ma an external magazine fed. It takes a the standard sort of a SR25 um, M1A1. It's got a really interesting setup here. Like so, this is the magazine release up here. But as you can see, it's got some dunk in there. From the foliage I was walking in. Um, it's got a. Can you see that? Um, you can't really see it. I'll, I'll give you a closer look later. But it, like basically, what it's got, it's got like a, a magazine catch on the side and on the front up here. So it can take uh, numerous different kind of magazines um, and feed reliably. And <clears throat> but I, I prefer these Magpul ones. And uh, I really it feeds really well these Magpul ones. The, the magazine it comes with does not work very well. It comes with the ten round like steel sort of a uh, magazine, and it just it doesn't feed well. It doesn't uh, maybe if you load, load five rounds it, it'll it'll feed well, but anything more than five in it it's really a struggle. It's got these uh, pretty cool built-in iron sights, and this uh, this camera's really not working with me, but um, the sight picture's really nice on it. It's got a fiber optic one up front, and it comes with a flash hider. I didn't really see the, the sense in that because I don't really shoot at night, and it doesn't really um, do anything for recoil, and, and you know, it's one shot at a time anyway, so of course you got to reacquire your target each time. So uh, I didn't really see it necessary, and then it adds, you know, maybe what an inch and a quarter to the overall length, and I didn't like that. Um, it is bolt action, as I've said, so, um, you know, if you don't know, that, that's to cock it, and then to load the next round, you have to do it manually each each time. Um, the bolt is a little bit, I wouldn't call it sloppy in here, but it's got some wiggle room. And I'm assuming it's just because uh, they made it kind of looser tolerances, maybe intentionally, just to, um, uh, so it's kind of like an AK, and it just kind of runs and runs and runs, you know, don't need to clean it. And the bolt is actually kind of uh, slightly fluted, that's what you'd call it. Uh, and it makes it to where, you know, the, the dirt kind of catches in, in those little grooves and it makes it to where like you can, you know, cycle the bolt, I guess, easier. I, I don't really know if it, if it helps a lot, but it, it looks cool and I like it. Um, what else? This is actually a wood stock. A lot of people confuse this for a polymer stock just because it's black. It's actually a, a plastic coated wood stock. It's, I mean, it's solid all the way through. Uh, it comes with this pretty nice... Sort of rubberized butt pad, and uh, it absorbs, uh, you know, a lot of the recoil. The 308 doesn't have a whole lot of recoil, but with the bolt action, you definitely feel it more than like a semi-auto you would. Uh, it's got this cool little feature up in the back here, so um, you know it is clear. I'll do a physical check here. There's no round in there. There's no magazine to, to load one. So, um, so watch that silver piece there. So you can actually tell when it's cocked visually. Um, you know, it doesn't. It's not a huge feature, but it, it's kind of a cool feature. And so it's cocked again. Um, here's a safety. It's thumb actuated, and this is actually the bolt release over here. And I'll show you that in a second. But uh, I wanted to show you the trigger here. This this trigger is actually user adjustable. You don't have to have any kind of knowledge of guns or anything. You just literally. Um, you take these couple bolts off, I think it's actually maybe just one, but you take these bolts off, this bolt right here, and uh, you can re uh, remove the receiver from the stock, and you can actually adjust this trigger here, and there's this little blade, so you can't actually pull the trigger unless you pull this blade first, so let me cock it again, so, and it's a really, really crisp trigger it doesn't need any work you can set it anywhere from two and a half to five pounds so depending on your preference you can actually set it up for 
you know how you like it. Um, one of the negatives of this gun, uh, the magwell is plastic, and for some reason on the AR, not the AR-15, but the ones that takes the AR-15 magazines, they make a 5.56 223 model as well, has a as a either I think it's aluminum or a steel magwell. I don't know why they put a um, a plastic one on the 308 version and then a steel or aluminum one on the 556 model which doesn't make much sense um the rail that comes with this they actually have have different models like where the rail goes further up and whatnot but the rail that comes with this particular model was loose from the factory so make sure and tighten it up um or at least check it before you start shooting because i went through like two boxes of ammo trying to zero this thing and i'm like i couldn't figure out why the hell it wasn't uh you know zeroing and, and it just ended up being that this this top rail was not um on there very well so i'd i'd um i'd uh, suggest lock tighting it um uh, and be careful don't like over lock tight it so you can't get it off and strip the screws and stuff it's not worth it for that but you know maybe get some some blue lock tight uh so without further ado i think that's all the things i want to go over with with you guys um to clarify i guess some people might see this here before i it says 762. Yeah, that's fucking light, man. 762 by a 51, or it doesn't say by 52, uh, 51. But it does say 762 millimeter NATO on it uh, for the caliber. Uh, but it has been confirmed to, to work perfectly with 308. Um, a lot of people will say, well, if it says 762 on the barrel, that's what you run in it. And uh, um, today I am running 762 by 51. But. Um, it's been confirmed that that it can run that just fine. So, and, and uh, just to show you that it is threaded. I mean, you can put, I guess, whatever you want in there—a silencer or a suppressor, rather. And it's a big fly. Can you see that? Can you see a fly? <laughs> Fuck off, fly. Um. So yeah, it's a. I guess these are Williams sights. Um, they're pretty good, cool sights, and they're adjustable. Anyway, let's get to it. I keep on saying that, but then I keep on finding other th things. That, these these rings I got here, actually really cool. They're like these are like spring loaded, and you can actually um, loosen these by hand. And I have them set to where if you put them in the exact same spot, you don't have to re-zero your uh, your scope each time. Like it, I, I've tried it out like two or three times here now. I've taken it off the rifle, put it back on, you know, shot the shot the irons and stuff, and then I put it back on, and then. I didn't have to re-zero it or anything. Um, do keep in mind that I'm not like doing super precision work with this rifle, and I'm not really all about like you know getting that perfect headshot from a thousand yards, at least not yet. Uh, let me show you how the bolt releases really quick. Uh, just push that tab, and that's the bolt. But like I was saying, focus, damn it! If I could uh, afford to get a new phone right now, I would. But as I was saying. I'm not doing like super precision work, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I'll show you the, the targets we're going to be working with. Uh, we're just going to be shooting over here. It's about uh, maybe 100 yards away. It's a fucking fly in my ear. Get the fuck off, piece of shit. I just hit that fly. I feel bad I hit the fly and he just hit the ground. That's what he gets though for landing on my fucking earlobe. He didn't even get off. Like I moved. Anyway. Uh, I was originally going to do this from farther away, but you couldn't see the targets, and I could barely see the targets, and you could barely hear it when it hit, so. But these are what I'm shooting. They're about, you know, three to five feet apart. And if you look over there, where that little wooden structure is, that's where we're shooting from. Again, it's about maybe 110 yards. Here's our little area again. So I'm going to find a suitable place for you guys to rest. Actually, you know what? I might have found right now. Look at that. Holy shit. Okay. So hopefully you can see those targets. Way down there. Let's adjust it a little bit. Okay. Let's load this baby up. I'm shooting kind of far away from you so the recoil doesn't kind of vibrate the camera too much. And let's see if we can hit that that one on the right in the first shot here. 
as uh, Jerry Michelek or Michelark would say. Here we go! So as you guys probably noticed, the recoil was a little bit too much for that position. <laughs> Let's try that again. I did hit the target. We'll hit the one in the middle next. And uh, I'm going to try for a center mass shot because I already got the head shot on that one. So I wouldn't be able to prove that I hit it. And you guys saw that. So hopefully that doesn't vibrate the camera too much this time. I'm going to go for center mass. And I did not hit it, I don't think. I felt like that was a good trigger pull. Let's try it again. Wow, that's uh, surprising. I feel like I'm right on. Okay. Well, that target's now on the ground. We'll check that later, see if I got the center mass shot. I don't know if it was the ammo that was causing that accuracy problem or maybe bad trigger pulls on my part, but I felt like they were good. Let's try that, that one on the left there. And it doesn't got any hits on it, so I'm going to try to go for the head. That was really high. Again, maybe it's the barrel heating up? I don't know what the fuck. This thing has a, a medium bull barrel as it's described. So I really wouldn't imagine like the, the barrel heating up being a problem. Um, let's just go for a center mass shot so I can kind of get a good feel if it's, if it's shooting where I'm wanting it to. It could be the ammo because I did zero this gun with 308 with a little bit, a slightly different um, grain. But at this distance, I wouldn't think it would matter that much. Okay, that looks like it hit dead center. Um, so let's try for the headshot again. Okay, that was high. And I felt like that was a bad trigger pull. So that was not the ammunition, the gun, that was me. Okay, let's focus a little bit more here. help okay let's try center mass again that seemed like it was to the left no I guess I got a chunk of it um, I hit it right in the bottom section there that smacked it hard got a top uh, top right shoulder there See, again, that, that feels like it should have hit. Let's try a little bit differently here. Okay, that was not where I was aiming, but I got it. It's weird how you can't hear it sometimes, but that was, that was a hit too. Um, after I run through this magazine here, I'm going to put you guys down by the targets so you can kind of see them, see the hits. Yeah, that target's gone. The barrel's heating up quite a bit. That was it. That was a bad trigger pull, and I think that's the last shot. It was. So let's go down and put you guys by the targets. Wow, the magazine actually heated up. Oh, it's because of the sun. And uh, we'll run some more 308s. Um, probably the first 20, 20 rounds or so. And uh, let's let's walk down there. Some really good hits on this one on the left. I'm going to probably keep that one there since it doesn't seem to fall over. Um, now this one I can't really tell which side I was hitting. 
this is two hits on this side and one hit on this side on the bottom there. Um, so I can't really tell you where I was hitting there. This one was definitely this side because there's no hits on the other side, but I got a head shot. Or actually, no, I just got the center shot here because uh, the, the last time uh, I had those other two hits on there already. So let's set you up by the by the targets. Hopefully this doesn't damage my camera some in some way. Hey, so we're going to be shooting uh, from a different angle here. Um, this is what they look like from this angle. Pew, pew, pew. So, let's see what we got here. Got some magazines, some empty ones. Let's see if we can load these bad boys up kind of quick. Got some, some ZQ, what's ZQ1 or ZQI by MKE. This is just 10 rounds of it. Uh, this is 760 by 51 to remind you guys. And um, down there. This uh, this gun pretty much eats up whatever I've I've thrown in it. I haven't had any problems. So you know, thumbs up on that. I really enjoy this rifle. I like how short it is. I don't like those big long rifles, but I mean, if you're if you're into like long range stuff. I guess it's pretty necessary to get the extra velocity. Um, I've, I haven't chronoed this gun, so I don't know what, what these things are, are shooting out of here. Uh, let's load up some more rounds, too, if we have any. I don't think I, I brought a whole lot of rounds with me. So I guess I got 10 more rounds here. The first 20 rounds I didn't, I didn't really show you because it was just impossible to see what the hell I was doing. Um, I just wanted to get this angle so I could show you what kind of recoil this thing produces uh, with sort of... Uh, what are these, 147, 147 grain, uh, full metal jackets, um, 760 by 51, and I was shooting some 308 too, the, the, when you guys were watching from over where the targets were, I was shooting uh, 308 Winchester, um, and I think those are 100, 150 grains or 149, I don't know what grain it was, uh, but it was something similar to this. And this is kind of where I was shooting from. Got this cool little cockpit seat. And I already had a round loaded. Let's drop the mag here. This thing's kind of a bitch to load one by one. But it does work. If you lost a magazine, you had to load it one by one, you could do that. So, same three targets. Uh, as I said, about 100, 100 yards away. Uh, maybe more, maybe less. I'm can't really tell from here. So, here we go. Can't tell if that was, if I just barely nicked it or not. Looks like I kind of got it on the corner, but, okay. Oh, there goes that one. Going for the middle one now. Still standing. Luckily we can get some more shots on it before the video ends here. See, that's odd. So, 
with that round, I, I don't know if you could hear the difference. I could definitely hear the difference being here. But for some reason, these uh, ZQ1s or MKE rounds, um, from round to round, occasionally there's like a really hot one. Um, I don't exper experience that as much with the other uh, company I use. Um, I just started kind of using these because they were like dirt cheap. And, uh, but some, like that, it felt like it got there like instantly too. Like some of them you kind of feel like you can have like a split, you know, you know, one, one millionth of a second and you can kind of feel it. That one just was like, bam, right there. And I could just hear and feel the difference in it, you know. Um, okay. Probably got a little round. That one, I, I'm pretty sure I went through that little hole. <laughs> Not really. Oh, where the hell is this thing shooting from? I'm going for the, the far left one, and it seems like uh, just no matter what I do, that's not hitting. It seems like it's shooting up and to the right. The barrel's pretty hot, but um, let's go for the middle one and see if I can figure out where it's hitting. Might be up to the right again. Let me try Aiming bottom left here. This might be my last round here. I got two more rounds to show you, and then we'll switch over to the 12 gauge and see what I can do from here. Yeah, so I aimed bottom left and I hit dead center, so um, let's try it again. Yeah, and that one felt hotter again. Did you notice the, the difference? Um, so we're ready to go. That was the last round I had of um, 762 by 51. So this, this guy's gonna be retired for today. Um, for these distances, it's great. I highly recommend this gun. It seems built well. It's a little bit too expensive for what it is, I think. Um, but for the for the flexibility you get with um, like the magazine choice and just the, the reliability of a bolt action, just you know, it always works. Um, you know, easy to take apart, easy to maintain. Like literally all you have to do is take off the bolt, clean the bolt down, you know, maybe wipe out the magazine well and uh, get yourself a uh, bore cleaner and you can, you don't have to take the, the receiver off to, to clean it for that. So um, trigger's great. Um, you can get different stocks for it. The the, the iron sights are great too. Like I'll, I'll show you guys the iron sights maybe in a future video, but they're they're great for, for these distances. Uh, they, they You feel like you're really down to the rifle, you know. Um, I actually prefer the positioning of my cheek when I'm using the iron sights rather than the scope. So this is a great scope too um, for, for shorter distances and you can you know set it to, to one times magnification which you don't really get that too often in a sort of a scope kind of setup. And it, it you know it, it feels like one times you know. So cool rifle, give it a thumbs up. Um, let's switch over some 12 gauge. This thing is the Hatsan Escort Magnum, if you guys aren't familiar with it. Uh, it is a 12 gauge and it's uh, set up to be to Magnum, um, so it can actually handle Magnum shotgun shells, although I'm running two and three quarters uh, slugs through it right now. We're going to be shooting some, some Remington uh, sluggers, uh, one ounce lead slugs. Supposedly they're, uh, what is it, yeah, 1560 feet per second. Load some of these bad boys up. This is a semi-auto shotgun, but you kind of have to treat it as if it's a um, a pump, <laughs> kind of, because it just does not want to feed the rounds reliably. And it used to, and I used to highly recommend this gun um, until I got maybe you know 1,500 rounds or so in, and it just started uh, the, the charging handle snapped off while it was shooting. Not even while I was cocking it, it just shot off. You know, I had to get a, a replacement one. This one hasn't had any, had any problems, but I guess from what they told me that, that the first initial run, um, they had a really brittle sort of material they made it out of or they didn't heat treat it correctly or something like that. So they fixed that supposedly, and, and it's actually a little bit longer too. So it actually goes in deeper and it's able to sort of catch more of the bolt carrier. Um, 
I stippled it, did a few modifications internally to make the hammer hit harder because I felt like the hammer wasn't hitting um, strong enough. And it actually ended up being the piston system. Uh, the piston was actually warping. I don't know how it did that, but it actually seized up on the the, the magazine tube, which uh, I don't know how that happened. But um, and the O-ring busted out a couple times. Uh, it's had a few issues, and I like this rifle. I can't say I, I would pay for it again now I, that I know about it, but if you're just going to be using the rifle minimally, I would definitely trust this rifle, like if it's brand new. If it's used, I wouldn't trust it. Uh, let's go ahead and take some shots with it, throw the ears on here. Uh, same distance, obviously I'm still sitting here, so we'll see what we can do with these iron sights. Um, they're fiber optic iron sights, it does got a Picatinny rail up here, I've, I've mounted a a Vortex Spark on it, but for some reason the Vortex Spark couldn't handle the recoil and started flickering. So I took it off and started working with the irons again, and they're accurate for, for the, again, these distances. So, um, and the sight, the front sight would fall off, so I Loctited it. You know, things like that were kind of annoying. Um, we're loaded up here, so let's go ahead and take some shots. Uh, let's see what we can do here. That was pretty close. Okay, didn't uh, reset the hammer for some reason. Okay, there's a hit. Just to make sure it reset. Same target. Okay. And I don't know if that one reset too, so we'll reset it manually. Okay, it didn't reset. See what I mean? And it has something to do with the piston. I'm gonna try getting a new piston. They're pretty cheap, but uh, it just doesn't seem like it should be having that problem. Like the metal should be strong enough to withstand, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit disappointed, but it, it's a cool rifle. Shotgun. Okay, that was five rounds. I think I missed once maybe. Um, the iron sights are great on it. We'll throw some more rounds in here. Uh, after I get done shooting it, um, I'll show you kind of what the, the 12 ounce slugs do to the targets. Because uh, they, they do actually, not from this distance, but when you shoot them closer up, they damage the, the targets quite a bit more than the 308 does, like quite a bit more. So another thing, kind, of, kind of thing about this rifle that's annoying is it has this little, let me show it to you has this little uh, gate lock, so I, I can't actually push this up until I push this. So you have to actually make contact with that first to load them in. And then this little part right here is really sharp, so it catches your thumb if you put the, the shell in too far. So kind of annoying design, but it's also the bolt release. And I can see why they did it, because they were trying to maybe be uh, you know innovative. And it is pretty innovative. I've never seen a design like that before. But um, I do prefer the bolt release up here. Um, this is actually the cutoff lever or cutoff switch or button, and you can actually cut off the magazine tube and just fire it single shot for like sport shooting, um, where they only allow like maybe single shot loading or whatever, or just for fun if you don't want to run through all your rounds really quick. I've used the feature before, not very often. Um, okay, it's got this cool little shell holder in the back. I I, I do practice like speed reloads of this thing. I'm not going to do it today because there's no real point, but uh, let's shoot some more here. I felt like it reset. Let's try it again. No, it did not. And that was a good round. I'll, I'll get that in a second. Okay, that did not hit. I felt like that was a good trigger pull, too. Damn it! <laughs> Sorry. Set. Caught the little bottom section of it. Let's throw these rounds in there quick. Well, we still got some light, even though we got plenty of light. So that's cool. So you load it up in the gate here, and then when you load the next round, 
the bolt goes forward. So that's the whole theory behind it, and it's pretty cool. I do like that. Um, that one that would actually surprise me because I didn't think that the trigger reset well the targets look like after they've been hit I know you saw a little bit of it earlier but this is a, like the jacket here kind of strips the jacket off the 308s or 762 it's a little bit of lead still on there there you can kind of see but um that's what the 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 targets do is just like literally just strip it and then all the ledges splatters. Um, these, uh, where are the 12 gauge? It, it's hard to tell which ones are the 12 gauge from this distance, but when they're closer, uh, let's see if we can find a hit by one. Uh, I shot one of these pretty close up with the 12 gauge. It might be this one here. Yeah, okay. You can kind of see this one. Let's see if you can see how, how it like creates these. Uh, it's hard to tell, but that's from a 12 gauge right there. Like, and and it's noticeably larger divot uh, by feel. And that was for maybe like 50 yards or something like that. Um, they have a they hit a lot harder. But they, they they're so big and. They just slow down a lot quicker and just such a big mass of lead that just like just starts arcing and losing its energy. But I just want to show you the targets kind of like close up and then I just literally just spray paint over this stuff. I don't like scrub it off or scrub it clean. Just spray paint over it. Cool plates though. Um, it seems like they're going to last a long time, probably my, my entire life. As long as I don't hit it with some really potent stuff and from really close I think they'll be fine.